Today at Blade HQ, we have a special guest here with us, the Epic Snuggle Bunny. And he is an extreme knife collector. You've got stuff from all over the place. I have a problem, we'll just put it there. No, it's a, it's a good problem. What is up, guys? Today at Blade HQ, we have a special guest here with us. Who are you, man? I am Epic Snuggle Bunny. The Epic Snuggle Bunny. <laughs> Which is amazing. This is Austin, and he is an extreme knife collector. You've been kicking around the knife industry. I, how long now? Seven years. Seven at years. Least. I remember when I first started at Blade HQ, Austin was one of the first folks to comment on our stuff, and it was like, who's this epic snuggle bunny dude? It's a, it's a memorable name. It is. It yeah. totally is. So Austin has brought in part of his knife collection. How much of your collection is right here? Uh, Barely a quarter? Uh, less a quarter. than a quarter. What? Less yeah, than a quarter. A small sample size. He brought in a big Spyderco brag bag, basically, <laughs> and we said, all right, we can only feature so many of these, and we pulled these out. Now, let's talk about your collection, Austin. You've got stuff from all over the place. Yeah. How does your collection work? Um, you know, I don't really have anything specific. Like, you know, the last video you guys did, who was that with? With Spencer. With Spencer, it was very specific pair of twos, and he collected the steels, essentially. My collection is very eclectic. The only thing you'll find in common across mine is that they're all quality knives, well-built, typically really good action, good fit and finish. Um, other than that, it's just kind of whatever tickles my fancy. Okay, I love it. So what's the range over here? Like price-wise? Price range. Uh, table price on those is about 1300 Secondary market, at least double that. Okay, what's price range over there? Oh, these? Uh, Kershaw CQC 7K, I believe these are like 30 bucks, 35 maybe. So from 30 bucks to 1300 bucks and everything in between, let's dive into it. Why a Kershaw in the collection? You know, it's um, it's always nice to have a really good budget knife, whether you're traveling, um, you go to help someone move, you're gonna let someone use it, um, you might lose it or break it, 35 bucks, you'd be sad, but it wouldn't break the bank. You wouldn't lament it for days. So. Really high quality, um, really good fit and finish, and it's, yeah, the value's there, so. Nice. Now, one thing about your collection I think is interesting, Austin. I mean, you've got customs on here. Mm -hmm. They're all users. Yeah, I carry everything. There's not anything I have in my collection that I've not carried and used. Doesn't mean abused, but I've carried and used everything. Why, why is that? Because I feel like if I had this kind of collection, I'd be like, safe queen. It's all a safe queen. The when you have something in the safe and it comes time to, hey, I need to free up some funds, I want another knife, those are always the first to go. So if you don't carry it, chances are you're just gonna end up selling it. It's just a matter of time. Interesting. So the ones that I carry the most are the ones that stay around the longest. The ones that I carry the least are typically the ones to go. Hmm. I've had a couple safe queens, they were they all went. They all so, went. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's dive into the next one, the Kaiser Megatherium, right? Yeah. Yes. Why is this in your collection? It's it's ridiculous. It's fun. It's <laughs> awesome. I mean, if you have a small collection, every piece has to be very purpose driven. The larger the collection gets, the, the more, more more fun you can have. The right? more fun you can yeah. have. Like this carries, this cuts well. It's it's very comfortable in the hand, despite the way that it might look initially. And so it's um, it's just fun. It's enjoyable. It's it's a cool piece. You've been collecting seven years, basically. Yeah. You're in so deep. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's a really fun one. It's um, it's way more useful than you think it would be just looking at it. And that's that's the thing I love about your collection is there's there's not a lot of cohesive rhyme and reason to it. Mm -hmm. But each one that you have in the collection, there's a reason you own it, which yeah. I think is pretty darn cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Why do you own this Benchmade Anthem? Ooh, I've I've had a lot of Benchmades over the years, but this is by far the best Benchmade I've ever had. Um, they incorporated a new spring for this one. It runs on bearings. It's an integral, which means it has one solid piece of titanium. Um, just by far the best I've ever had, and so it it stuck around. Whereas a lot of my other Benchmades went over the years. Tell me about the pocket clip. I didn't like the pocket clip. Um, it didn't really function very well. It looked good, but it didn't function well. So a friend of mine, um, Adam Purvis, he does custom clips, custom backspacers, he does custom knives. Um, he made that one for me and it's it's just kind of a nice, a little bit of flair, but it's actually more functional than the, the clip that came with it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Like, excellent knife, but I love that that whole Damascus pattern you got going on there. Oh yeah, that, so. yeah piece of Damascus is awesome. Yeah, just beautiful. Yeah. And I, so you guys know this, I, I've been carrying a sequel for a while, and uh, I love the Axis Lock. Mm -hmm. 
but this one is so smooth. And what you were telling me the difference between them. This one's got a spring versus mm -hmm. a kind of a coil spring on this Yeah, way. so you've got the Omega spring that's in mm -hmm. here. This one has a coil spring, and the lighting's Austin's probably like, not adequate. Austin's like expert, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm a, like so beginner I'm here. It, I have a problem. We'll just put it no, down. No, it's a, it's a good problem. So the, the coil spring um, is actually down inside of the handle. It adheres to the back. But what this does on the bearings is it gives you... With the access lock, you can do one of two things. You can either tighten it down so it's perfectly centered, or you can leave it kind of loose and so it has blade play moves back and forth while staying perfectly centered. So the ball bearings and the coil spring let it be both perfectly centered as well as um, no blade play and smooth drop down action. So it's, it's the best of everything with the access lock. Now, this isn't cheap, but it's it's superior to the original yeah. access lock in I my agree. opinion. So. I agree. It's it's a cool piece. You had to have it for your collection. Oh, I had to have it. I'm I'm a big <laughs> fan of the I integral it, construction. So that's cool. Okay, yeah. what's next on the list? Uh, all right. So this is from We Knives. They are a high quality manufacturer out of China, um, and this was a prototype they brought to Blade Show. Um, they had a lot of new prototypes. This is the one that I absolutely loved because of the ergonomics. And it's essentially an upgraded version of the 617, which I think you guys still carry. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and while this one isn't out, the Model 702 is quite similar, which I think you guys also carry. Yeah. So I like prototypes, you know, and uh, it's it's just really well done. It's, it's a rare bird in the collection. For now, yeah, That's for cool. now. That's super cool. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Okay, so... One thing I like about Austin's collection too, you guys know I'm a cheap sucker. We've established that before. The knives in his collection, some are like way outside of my budget and others I'm like, okay, I could afford that if I wanted to. It's not yeah. a, it's not so highbrow that it's like, you can't attain it. Mm -hmm. So next on the list, why do we have the ZT0562, right? You know, it's, um, it's one of the best knives, all things considered. I think it was, um, Another retailer basically said, once you hit the 240 price point, everything above that is essentially diminishing return in terms of materials and fit and finish. So you have uh, premium blade steel, either M390, 204P, it's on bearings, titanium frame lock with a stainless steel lock insert, um, and you have US-based warranty support, which, you know, if you're in the US, um, is a huge advantage. Makes a difference. So uh, ZT has always set the benchmark for the best quality at the best price with the best support. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of other companies make really good knives, but all when you blend everything together, ZT typically comes out on top. And you, you needed to do a little bit of aftermarket pizzazz, can we call it pizzazz? Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, not as much as I used to, but yeah, this piece is, is good enough to merit an upgrade, so it has a superconductor uh, over travel stop there. Nice. Um, so it's, it was good enough for the piece. I, I love it, man. Yeah. I love it. Now, that is an obtainable ZT. Yeah. The next one, not so obtainable at this point. Yeah. What is it? So the next piece, um, this was a limited edition from Zero Tolerance called the Triple Nine. They didn't make very many. The This is the most limited edition piece that Zero Tolerance has ever produced. Semi-integral construction, the ZT back there. The blade steel has a carbon fiber inlay, two pieces of steel that have been brazed together with copper, um, bearings um, just over the top. It was their Halo project. They do a Halo project every few years. The is that what they call them? Halo projects? That's what I call them. Because um, it's, it's kind of like the crown jewel that they just, they're going to massage until it's right. Yeah, I mean, it's its just, this is the best that we can currently do with yeah. all of our capabilities. So first the triple seven, which hit huge waves in the knife community, mm -hmm. followed by the triple eight, which trickled out. It was really like ambiguous and unknown where mm -hmm. and how. And then the triple nine was, was the most recent, so. That's cool. Um, a very cool piece, very limited, really expensive now on secondary market. So that's cool. And you use it? Yeah, I carry it. Yeah. Tell us in the comments if that's Harris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's I carry it. I, I don't know if use it, it, but I definitely I think it's carry awesome. it. Yeah, it's a I think cool it's piece. Awesome. So okay, guys, we got to jump into a commercial break because uh, sometimes you got to just do a commercial. So we'll be back in just a second. Oh hey, I want to tell you about this CRKT sock sock promotion. You got a CRKT on this side, you got a Blade HQ on this side. When you buy any CRKT product worth over $30, those socks will be yours. Add them to your cart. Over and out. All right, guys, and we are back with another knife. What do we got here, Austin? This is the Liang Ma Lanny Flipper. Um, it's his newest release, and this was a, a special edition done in Damasteel. Who made it? 
Uh, so it's made by Riot Knives of China, a very, very high quality manufacturer. Um, a lot of people would like to work with them, but they just don't have the capacity. I, uh, I think on the table, this might be my overall favorite as far as flair, but also it's, it feels like a really useful knife to me. Mm -hmm. Like, well, it's it's in it's closer to your size range than yeah, a lot of these other ones. Maybe that's what it is too. And it has a little bit of a little bit. It's not obviously a replica of the Lanny flipper done by Tony or the Lanny um, slip joint bump done by Tony Bowes, but it has a little bit of that influence. And so, a little kinda, bit of the old world, yeah, a lot of the new. It's new world, yeah. So I like that. Um, okay, what's next on the table? We ought to talk about these two together. Okay, so these are this model is called the Freedom Fighter, uh, made by Shane Atwood. He's actually out here in Utah where we are. And so they're both the Freedom Fighter. This one's a frame lock, full titanium. This one's a liner lock done with carbon fiber and Damascus and lightning strike carbon fiber, Damascus backspacer. So same check model, check just backspacer. That is sick. With the detent balls of two, if the light will show it, inlaid into the inlaid into it. Wow, mm -hmm. that's crazy. So all hand done, um, but it's just interesting the variation you can get within one model once you get into custom knives. I mean, they look like completely different knives. Same exact model. So everything we've looked at up to these ones are production knives. Correct. Yeah, these are these are the first customs we've these gotten are from, into here. Okay, so uh, let's make some distinctions here. Most of you guys know this, but what is the difference between a production knife and a, and a custom? Production knives are done on assembly lines, so they'll do you know parts in batches. Um, then they assemble them all, send them out. Um, you know, some hopefully highly skilled guy on a production line. Custom, one guy, one shop various tools that they use and so there's just one person making everything start to finish typically not done in batches typically one at a time completely one off in in most cases but not always so these are one of a kind mm -hmm. it's going to have the the maker's mark all over it basically yeah you won't you won't ever see another one like it um probably sure probably. sure and then we were discussing off camera we're not going to get into it today but the mid-tech market is a completely different spot somewhere mm -hmm. between production and custom uh, you don't have a ton of mid-techs. I've, I've stepped away for, from them for the most part. There's a lot of ambiguity in there. Um, sure. I About would say who if, did what and who touched what. Yeah, I would say if you're if you're wanting to get into mid-techs, you just need to understand exactly what that particular one you're interested in, how much time was put in by the maker, how much by the production line, and uh, just know what you're buying before you put that kind of money out. So. Nice. Be 100% clear. Okay, this one's a this one's kind of a unicorn in your in your collection. <laughs> Why is that? Um, it is. Uh, a custom slip joint from Johan Ellis of South Africa, Damascus steel, carbon fiber. It's my only custom slip joint and one of very few slip joints in my collection. Um, I wanted a really, really nice slip joint if I was going to have one custom, and this certainly fit the bill. Okay, why no slip joints? Like, what's the it, it just, what's your rationale? Utility. Um, you okay. know, again, I pull this one out of my pocket. It's at the edge of my pocket, easy to pull out. One-handed opening, I cut what I need to. One-handed closing goes back in the pocket. This one requires a little bit more time and energy and, and forethought and, you know, use. Two-handed opening, yeah. fishing it out of deep in your pocket probably, um, and then two hands to close it, put it back. So um, it certainly has its place, and people might prefer that type of interaction, but just not as useful as modern designs. So That's my philosophy too. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ditto on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not a big slip joint fan just because we've kind of – Technology-wise, mm -hmm. it's like driving an old car. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, there's a lot faster deployment. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to carry a knife, let's carry yeah. it right. In my That's own. why things like this are coming out. A little bit of uh, that traditional design, but still has all Mixed. the utility of modern yeah. knives. Yeah. Okay, this one's got a cool story, Austin. Yeah, so this is Craig Brown um, out of Washington, I think. Um, I can't remember right now. He's a new custom maker. Everything's done on CNC, engineer full-time. Um, but we... He worked with me on the initial design. Um, I sent him a couple knives to look at, and he made some changes to the model and all subsequent models because of it. Uh, we changed the geometry on the flipper tab, added the hole, went from a titanium liner lock to a stainless steel liner lock for you know better wear, no stick, um, less maintenance long term. And this one's a full integral as well, one solid piece of titanium. And it is solid. Oh, it's a heavy sucker. <laughs> um, I, I feel like man, if you if you needed like a projectile, <laughs> just it's a brick. He's a brick house. I, I would I would probably <laughs> opt for something a little less expensive, but yeah, it would function. You needed an expensive projectile. An expensive brick. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. 
It's, it's a beautiful knife though. And the thing I, I think is really cool about your collection, Austin, is you've got pieces like this mm -hmm. that are not only one of a kind customs, mm -hmm. but they're one of a kind customs that somehow you influenced. You gave insight or input mm -hmm. or somebody asked for, for feedback and it's yeah. like, this is part of your collection, but you've also, it's got your fingerprints yeah. in it too, which I think is cool. Yeah, I've affected a, a fair amount of change to custom makers, some production companies over the years, so. That's cool. Yeah. I like it. Okay, the, the crown jewel of what you brought today. Tell us about it. So this is a <laughs> Shirogorov F5 Silk is the specific model. Um, it is part of their custom division line. Very limited quantity, very hard to get. I had to, I got lucky and got drawn on a lot of. Lucky. At the USN show in Vegas, 2017. So this is brand new for you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the newer pieces in my collection and um, very expensive. Um, and secondary market prices are crazy because they're so limited, but just phenomenal fit and finish. Um, all the details on this knife, the way it feels in the hand, the action, it uses um, roller bearings instead of balls. Hmm. Um, kind of small little barrels, essentially. Okay. Um, so, and that's unique to the custom division of full customs, but uh, really cool piece. Um, the, the most expensive and most valuable and arguably in my collection, so. That's uh, cool. And it's not even a custom. That's super cool, man. Yeah. So. You're in so deep. Okay, what's on the table? Yeah. Which is your favorite? Don't ask me that. No, I do it. This is what I always ask. Oh, man. Um, I don't have one. What? Really? If I had a favorite knife. Choose a favorite child. If I had Everyone a, has a favorite child. If I had a favorite knife, I wouldn't have 70. <laughs> Plus. I feel like that should be a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. If I really found a favorite, then I would stop buying. Then I would but, stop. So I'm not looking for the favorite. That's that's the thing. I want to avoid finding a favorite because then the then, journey continues. Then the journey would be over. Yeah. I like that philosophy. Well played, sir. Okay, yeah. I, I think my favorite on the table is this Leon Ma today. Mm -hmm. I like the good clean lines. Mm -hmm. It's kind of got a, a manly bold feel. Traditional plus modern. Yeah, the micarta, the mm -hmm. bolster lock, the the bearings. The dam is still really hard to find, quite expensive, but he has S35 VN blade steel versions yeah. that are significantly less expensive. And Leon Mon's just a nice guy. He, he is, he's Dang a super nice guy. nice guy, great designer. So, yep, that's awesome. Austin, thank you, this is, yeah. this is fantastic. Guys, if you wanna see more of Austin's collection, where can they find you? Uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny on Instagram and YouTube. And he does reviews, what, once a week, twice a week? Uh, more often, less often, they, they go up often, but sporadically. Austin knows that, as you've seen, Austin knows the knife industry back backward, forward. I'm sitting here like, uh, okay, I don't know anything, but I, I'm stoked, man. You you know so much, and I appreciate you jumping on with us and, and sharing some of that knowledge. So thank yeah, you very my much. Pleasure. If you have any questions for Austin, leave them in the comments. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll have another video coming out next week. And uh, be sure to subscribe. If you like the video, give us that thumbs up. Thanks, guys. See ya. I have to sign Cowboy Austin. So, so uh, Austin gets to sign Austin. Austin signs Austin, yes. All right, we'll do it. Yes. This is a weird tradition, guys. Done. All right. There it is, all the guests. Thank you, Austin. Thank you, Austin. Yeah. <laughs>